It says, financially fit people don't ask, can I afford this? As much as they ask, do we really want this? Will it help our purpose and dream? And then how will it help our purpose and dream? In what ways might it be a distraction? Will it cost more money to take care of it or keep it? Would saving or investing the same amount be bigger help for our purpose and vision? Is now the best time for this purchase or would it be less expensive at a later date? They cultivate a habit of just saying no to purchases even when they can easily afford them and putting much of their money into savings and investments. So that's principle number 13. That was a lot, right? So let's talk about some real life scenarios of this. Um, I, I went on a book tour in 2014 and it was a four month book tour. It was supposed to be five months. It ended up being a four month. And I was going to be on the road in hotel rooms. And I decided I didn't want to do that. So I bought a 45-foot diesel pusher luxury coach. And um, I've now owned that eight years. And that thing costs me about $25,000 a year to maintain it. So I've had it eight years, $25,000, $200,000. It's a lot of money. Currently, I have it for sale. Um, when I lived in Tahoe, I used it constantly. Now that I've moved, when I moved to Vegas, I stopped using it. And then uh, now that I've been in Idaho, I haven't used it once. So I haven't used this motorhome literally in five years, guys. It's it's pretty pathetic. So here I've spent $200,000 on a motorhome that I used to use all the time, and I just haven't used it. So... Principle number 13 is at the time, it was worth it to buy that. Looking back, hindsight, um, I, I don't know if I would have bought it now. I know I wouldn't have buy it today if someone offered me that. I would say, no, I would rent one. Okay, I'd rent it and um, I'd, I'd just use the rental one and then I would save the rest of the money. But at the time, I thought, oh, I'm going to use it all the time. And... Granted, at the time, I was also retired. So that was the other part. Because, see, I was only working about an hour to two hours a week at that time. And it wasn't until 2017 that I really started working again full time. And I've been working full time since. And that's really the reason I haven't used it as much. Because I was using it all the time in retirement, constantly. And so it's something I want to sell. And I got offered um, a trade-in, pretty high trade-in. And the nice thing is, is it's 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 almost paid off. So when I sell it, I'm going to get a, a ton of cash. And then I'm going to use that cash for something else. And I'll, I'll probably buy some real estate with it. Now, the other advantage of it is even though it cost me $200,000 in cash flow, it didn't really cost me $200,000. And the reason why it didn't really cost me the $200,000 is I ran it through the business. And the business got the write-offs, but it also got one other thing that a lot of people don't realize. It's called depreciation. See, when I bought that, it was valued around $400,000. Brand new, it was a million. I bought it used. So when I bought it, it was eight years old. And it had depreciated 60%. And I was able to do what's called a section 179, what Ivan just posted in there. Thank you, Ivan. Section 179 that allowed me to do a $400,000 write-off day one, which meant that was $400,000 of income in 2015 that I paid zero income tax on, not one penny. And at a 50% tax bracket, that's 200 grand. So it really didn't cost me 200 grand. It saved me 200 grand. Now, over the last eight years, I've used it and I've made payments of around 200 grand. So financially, I did okay. If I would have bought that outside of the business, it wouldn't have been such a great deal. But back to how this applies to principle 13. 
Does keeping this help me? No. Does it keeping it help me financially? No. I could use that same money on another investment. I was also offered a pretty good chunk of cash to trade it in on a new Mercedes camper van. And I considered it. But then I started thinking about it. Would I really use it? Yes, it's smaller. I can get it in and around the mountains. I can get my dirt bike on the back, my motorcycle. Uh, I can do a lot with it. But would I really use it? Probably not. Probably just going to be another distraction. So I applied principle 13 recently. So I want you to think about that. Just because you can buy something doesn't mean you should buy it. And what we do as men, generally it's men that do this. At least this is what I've noticed. Uh, we spend a lot of money on big purchases, boats, motorcycles, extra cars, uh, where women usually spend a little bit every month on things. We like to go big and it's like 400 bucks a month. And when you make those de decisions, you need to really ask yourself, is this going to help you? Is this something long term? Would it be better to just rent it? You know, I'd love to have a boat right now, but I can tell you there's a rule. If it flies, floats, or you know what? It's cheaper to rent. So it floats, therefore it's cheaper to rent. So that's principle 13, is you really got to think, should you buy this? This is another thing. Can I afford this? See, my kids grew up never hearing me say, I can't afford this. Never. Now, maybe Chastney, she's on right now. She's my oldest. She's 32. Maybe when she was four or five years old. Maybe. Um, I don't know. Chastney, have you ever heard me say, she's on right now. Have you ever heard me say I can't afford it? No. Yeah. I I, instead, I would say, how can I afford this? What can I do to afford this? How can I purchase this? And I'm a believer in paying cash for things, guys, but I'm also a believer in debt. If, if you're going to go buy a new vehicle, so... I'm getting ready to sell my my GMC Denali pickup, and I'm getting the first 2023 Toyota Capstone truck. Uh, it's being built on August 11th. The very first one is going to be here in the United States. I'm getting it. And I'm going to finance it. Here's why. I paid $84,000 for my GMC almost four years ago. 84,000. I immediately got an $84,000 write off on day one. I financed it at um, that loan, I think was like six or 7%, but later I refinanced it for 3%, two or three. It's pennies. Inflation's 9%, two to 3% interest is free money, basically. So I financed it and I got offered. I remember I bought this in December, 2018, three and a half years ago. I have 41,000 miles on it. Now that's not a lot of miles for a diesel. It's just barely broke in, literally just barely broke in. Um, I just got offered 75 grand for it on something I bought three and a half years ago for 84,000. So I'm most likely going to sell it for 75,000, which means I'll have 75 grand in cash. I'm going to take that, put it in an apartment complex that pays me 20% interest plus ownership. And then I'm going to finance the Toyota at 3%. So yeah, I could pay cash for the Toyota, but why would I? I'm going to make 20% on the apartment because that's what we pay. So even though I'm the owner of the apartment, I still get paid as the investor as well. So if you invest in one of my apartments, you can earn up to 20% interest as well. So because I'm an investor, I pay myself 20%. So I'm going to take that cash from the red truck, get 20% interest on the apartment, use the interest to pay the payment on the 3% loan. Okay. And then I'm going to write off the new Toyota as well. So you got to ask yourself, how can I afford this? Not can I afford it? But then really, even if you can afford it, 
should, should you buy it? Okay, so that's principle number 13.